as the college football world turns, burns and stuff. So, y'all, good to see you, Gary. And yeah, how about the Big Ten and the SEC getting their payday as ESPN's Heather Dinich, who I tell you all the time, does a great job on college football. If you do not follow her on Twitter, you should. Heather Dinich has exclusive reporting over the last, really, it's been six, eight weeks. Um, but Heather Dinich now is reporting that a financial uh, structure has essentially been agreed to amongst the uh, power players of college football and really the college football playoff. The backstory on this is we have been telling you ESPN has been pressuring the college football playoff committee to approve the contract that is on the table to extend the college football playoff. Now, there has been a hesitation to do that uh, because the SEC and the Big Ten have been threatening to take their ball and go make this, this God tier uh, if they do not get the financial resources that they are demanding. And it looks like the rest of college football, including the Big 12 and the ACC, have acquiesced to those demands. And it now appears that the Big Ten and the ACC, according to Heather Dinich at ESPN, is looking at between 25 and 30% of the total college football playoff revenue. And I thought it was very interesting this morning in our pre-show meeting, Jake made the point, Greg Sankey made the point, and Jake reiterated the point that Greg Sankey had pointed out in making his point that uh, the SEC has provided fully 40% of the teams for the college football playoff over its existence. He makes a pretty strong case, and apparently a lot of people agree with him because it looks like the Big Ten and the SEC are going to get 25 to 30% of the revenue uh, annually in the college football playoff. Jake, how do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I, I think that that it's hard to dispute what the SEC has done, and obviously the Big Ten, um, you know, following right on their, on their heels in terms of the college football playoff and, you know, just how dominant they've been. But I, but I think what's really interesting is when you start looking at, you know, percentages and who's making what and, you know, our current system versus what this new system looks like, just in generality, you know, right now the power, what was the power five was making about 20% <clears throat> each. They were each getting about 20% of the total revenue. And obviously that equals a hundred percent. And then of course the G fives were getting a small slice of the pie. So it winds up being like 98% and then 2%, whatever. Um, but now in the new system, you're talking about the SEC and the big 10 wanting to add an additional you know, five to 10% on top of what they were already getting, which may not seem like a lot, right? Go to the grocery store, they discount something 10%. You're like, yeah, dude, that's like two bucks. Who cares? But in this model, when we're talking about $1.3 billion being proposed over the life of this six-year agreement that they're trying to get done, that's a lot of bread, dude. You, you're, you're essentially going from, you know, making $2 million a year per team in your conference to $4 million a year Per, per team in your conference in the SEC and the Big Ten. So when you think about the fact that that the SEC's delivered 40% yeah. of the college football playoff teams, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of, of leverage over the conversation. So to me, I look at this situation and I say, this is exactly what we've been discussing. We've been telling you that the SEC, and specifically Greg Sankey, has been wielding this hammer of sorts to say, hey, we've done the winning, we deserve the lion's share. To which the G5 has said, hey, yeah, we don't necessarily disagree on that, but we're also getting screwed in this new model, right? We're, we're also seeing a tiny, tiny little bump in money. We're not seeing, you know, 10%. And, and so to me... This just comes down to the fact that it's going to be the SEC and the Big Ten making the money, getting the most access, and there's not anything anybody can do about that. Like we said, I believe, yesterday or the day before, it's not if this is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just how you want it to happen. As I always say, you're not going to stop anything. It's only about how you want to get piped. And that's exactly what this is. Yeah, I, I don't know that I agree with that. I think that, you know, that nobody's getting screwed here. I, I agree. And I think we've talked about this at length on the show. The Big Ten and the SEC deliver the biggest TV audiences. It's hard, it's hard to argue with that. And you add, you know, Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA to the Big Ten. It's hard to argue with that. You add Texas and Oklahoma. It's hard to argue with that. You have the biggest and the the most successful brands in college sports, 
and really college football in this conversation specifically, you have those most successful brands in the Big Ten and the SEC. I agree that they deserve more money, but we're talking about up to 30%. And you got to ask yourself, well, if if they're each getting that kind of money, if they're each getting you know 30%, 60% in total, uh, what does that leave for the, the Big 12 and the ACC? My guess is, and according to reports, the big the the Big Twelve and the ACC are looking at fifteen to twenty percent uh, of total revenue, and and to which I say, that's not a, a whole lot of money in in comparison. And we go back to this obsession that Brett Yormark has with building a business model in college basketball, and now it makes complete sense. And again, what have I been telling you about college basketball? The NCAA tournament is going to be expanded. And if you do not believe that that is coming, I think you're out of your mind because it is truly the only way that the Big 12 and the ACC can can be on a level playing field, if that's even possible, once these agreements are signed. I, I, I don't know that it's possible, but I think the only way to make that even close is to have an expanded NCAA tournament. And you look at basketball, specifically in the Big 10, you're looking at a at a a very weak basketball conference, uh, and take take Michigan to account for that. Who we're going to talk about in a mich- in a minute? Michigan basketball is an absolute disaster. One of your biggest brands is not currently relevant in college basketball. That's a problem. And you, you, you really look at expansion with Oregon, Washington, USC, and and UCLA. Three out of four of those brands are not relevant in college basketball, and UCLA is only occasionally relevant. The Big Ten did not address its weakness in college basketball, and I think that is a place where the Big 12 and the ACC can really make inroads because it's awfully difficult to argue that the Big 12 and the ACC are not the two best. It's not even a conversation. If I'm Brett Yormark, I am demanding that the college basketball tournament, the NCAA tournament, get expanded. You have to have it. It is the only way that you can add money to your pot and that you can win those shares by advancing deeper and deeper into the tournament. If I'm the G5, I am demanding that the NCAA tournament be expanded because, again, it is a revenue stream that, to a lesser extent, the the SEC, but to a significant extent, the Big Ten, is not able to tap into. So why would you not try to monopolize that revenue stream when they're going to take up to 60% of the revenue from the college football playoff? And I think that... While that may be justified in football, you have to find a way to offset that. There's there's no other there's no other way to go about this. And again, I go back to this idea about the power that that ESPN and Disney wield in college athletics, and I think it is significant. And I know this is always controversial, and I know people always get upset when we talk about this. But how many times do I have to sit on this show and tell you? When I talk to people in the college you know, football world and I talk to people in the, the TV industry and that's just about every day that I talk to somebody about this particular situation, it's simply a matter of how this college football playoff extension gets done and what the structure of it looks like. Do you understand that they're not even talking structure at this point? They're talking money because if the Big Ten and the SEC get – 25 to 30 percent of this revenue, which I think is done. If that happens, it almost doesn't matter how many playoff spots you get. If we expand this to 16 teams and then we take a leap to a God tier or whatever happens between three and five years down the road, it almost doesn't matter. It almost does not matter because you are not going to walk back the Big Ten in the SEC when it comes to that revenue. They're never giving that back to you. You are never taking that back from the Big Ten and the SEC. So they're going to be much more pliable on structure and much more pliable on a, on you know equal access to the college football playoff and winning a national championship because they're already making the money. This is no different than Live Golf versus the PGA. You're essentially guaranteeing the Big Ten and the SEC the lion's share of the revenue, and they don't have to do anything on the field to earn it. That's what this is. It is, in my opinion, D, you know, I don't know, de-incentivizing the the Purdue's of the football world, the Indianas of the football world to to rise 
to the top. It's not, there's no incentive there for them to build, to recruit, to spend more money building a program when frankly, they, they have no monetary investment in it. Well, and I think the interesting part to that end is that, is that this conversation we're having, this money we're talking about is just in the expanded college football playoff format. Right? That's right. 12 teamer. So if this is what they're doing in the 12 teamer or what's being proposed, Imagine what it looks like in a god tier format. Imagine what 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 it could look like um, in a in a you know situation where the Big Ten and the SEC poach the top half of your football conference uh, in the Big Ten or in the Big Twelve and the ACC, and it's just going to be this group of elite teams playing. This is my point. This is what we've been saying on the show. They're laying the groundwork for that setup in the future. They're going to get this agreement done. They're going to make it so they're making the most money out of anybody. And then once this agreement's done, we're going to move on to, hey, we need to set something up that ensures the long term, like decade, 20 year outlook of how we're going to do college football and how we're going to make it possible for the top cut of college football to to kind of step away from from everybody else, if you will. Because what's going to happen is the TV contracts are not going to get smaller. They're going to get larger because streaming money is going to come into this. And once you sign this extension with ESPN and ABC for the college football playoff, I think you are going to dramatically alter the structure of the college football playoff going forward. I don't think it's simply going to be where we're just going to expand the same format to 16 teams. I don't think that's going to happen. And I, I think it. there's going to be, I think you're going to get to 16 eventually, but I think you're going to be in a position where, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, we're, we're going to make decisions and we're going to consult you on it. It's not going to be like some collaborative because what's good for the college football playoff is now good for the sec and the big 10. What's good for whatever this structure is going forward now is good for the sec and the big 10. So I don't know. This is not doomsday. It's not that doomsday scenario where, like Jake just mentioned, the Big Ten and the SEC took the top half of the Big 12 and the ACC and said, okay, we're going to go play our own game. Because I think that would have been apocalypse. That would have been the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, and I think that you would have had more Pac-12 type situations where Oregon State and Washington State are just left twisting in the wind where K-State, where Iowa State are just left twisting in the wind, where Houston football is left twisting in the wind. Mm -hmm. That would have been the apocalypse. What you're looking at now simply is that the, the structure of power in college football changes. They're making more money, they're going to have more say, and they don't really need to ask your permission. That's To me, that's where we're going. And Greg Sankey's not even trying to hide that. So while all of the other hyenas are off in the corner talking about how the NCAA is going away and Monty said, you know, all the YouTube channels that are making videos oh, off Monty. of our videos, we appreciate your, you giving us run. Thank you. We just passed 76,000 subscribers the other day. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yay. But while all the other hyenas are out there trying to, to, to find ways to talk about us, we're just going to continue to tell you yeah, they don't care about the NCAA going away because the NCAA has no teeth now. Mm -hmm. They they can't enforce NIL regulations and aren't even going to fight that. They can't enforce transfer regulations and aren't even fighting that. So the portal's free, the NIL's free. We sat up on Congress yesterday. Ted Cruz with his grandstanding. Do we really need Nick Saban telling us how terrible the college football world is right now? I don't. We're well aware of it on the show. We yes. talk about it all the time. All the time. Right? Like, I don't need taxpayer dollar going to fix NIL. Yeah. That's not what we need. You let this happen. When you make decisions like give the SEC and the Big Ten 30% each. That's how we're hitting here. Mm -hmm. they, they'll, they'll continue to tell you, oh, Monty, oh, let me tell you how bad the NCAA is, Monty. That's bullshit. My God. Notice nobody up there yesterday was in favor of making kids employees. What happened to that? Oh, they got to be employees, Probably Monty. Employees, Monty, we got to have them be beneficial. Got to have them be employees. 
Got to have health insurance now, over we're, here, we're not, Monty. We're not talking about that. We're not. We're not interested in in Monty no, no. McBenefit. We're interested in in hey. You know, let's make sure we're all making money. And then if we're all making money, then, you know, if the kids want to make money, that's fine. We won't stand in the way. But as long as we're taken care of. And how many people on this show, and if you watch this show every day, you hear this all the time. When I say it's a bunch of old white men yeah. trying to control what young black teenagers are, are doing with their money. Thanks. And how much money they have access to. Yeah. What did we watch yesterday up on Capitol Hill? A bunch of old white guys being pissed off and, and bemoaning how much money young black teenagers are making. In Sorry, this folks, that's what it is. They don't want kids to have power. Nope. They don't want kids to have money. They don't want, uh, you know, universities uh, and their ath athletes creating unions. Just come play football and be glad that we're giving Dude. you an education that we're going to threaten <clears throat> to take away from you. Just shut up and dribble. It's fine. That's what it is. So that's all it is. That's not NIL in the portal. That's 25 to 30% of the revenue in Greg Sankey's pocket. That's how we get to Capitol Hill's got to make rules and laws with taxpayer money to save college football. And I love how these, these assholes are like, well, man, Joe Manchin yesterday. Oh God, the, the, the student athlete is, is gone as we know it. It's been gone. And what do you know about it, Joe? Like Joe, Joe Manson, the student athlete. What student athlete? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what a student athlete is. I know what a football player who's going to the league is that has to go to class because you mandate it. Come on, it's just so wild to me that this is the stuff that we're talking about. Like, yeah, I mean, I just think it's a matter of convenience when we start getting into congressional situations. It's like. It's like, oh, yeah, like the college football is terrible and the world's burning down. But, hey, guys, uh, you know, while the TV cameras are off, what can we work into the back end of this deal that we're not going to talk about? Right. Like it's that type of of conniving foolishness that takes place with college football in in congressional situations. And I just think mm. you, you want to sit there and you want to talk about how bad college football is. It's only getting worse with you involved. That's the problem. I think this is one of the, and we're going to talk about this RFK, Robert Kennedy, Aaron Rodgers, saving the world thing. But this is what, this is where we've gone in this country. Yeah. We don't solve the problem. We, we just want to make sure that we build systems to keep all the money. And then we complain about the unintended consequences. How many times have I said that on this show? The unintended consequences. Oh, man, Monty, we got to make them employees. Well, we can't do that. Better give mm -hmm. them their name, image, and likeness. And now here we are. Can't let them have their a look at our books, Monty. Can't do that either. Unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. So my point is, when we're talking about the Big Ten and the SEC getting 30% of the college football playoff money, that's a problem. When you're talking about giving Notre Dame and Again, Notre Dame, our mother. There's nobody that loves Notre Dame more than myself in oh, such Monty, as a life. Monty, Notre Dame's got to join a conference. Come on, Monty. Notre Dame's getting 1% every year of the Notre college Dame football playoff rev. Well, Monty, that's not a lot of money. 1%. You're guaranteeing Notre Dame $2.1 million every year. That's a lot of money, bro. Why would you Why would you join a conference? I get, where, where are all the uh, hyenas who are like, hey, Monty, finally forced Notre Dame to join a conference. Holy cow. You did? You're giving them $2.1 million every year out of the college football playoff. Um, not Find me a university not in the Big Ten or the SEC who would say no to that. Because if you're looking at the Big Ten and the SEC getting, what, $4 million, $3 to $4 million a school in a 16 to 20 team league, which is coming, 20 teams I think is definitely going to happen. You know. But you look at they're making 3 to $4 million a school now. You're looking at two to three million dollars a school in the in the the Big Twelve and the ACC. Why would Notre Dame walk away from two point one million dollars a year? In addition to their TV contract. Are you kidding me? They're they wouldn't. getting paid, bro. Yeah, you're getting paid. And and who's getting paid? And again, Notre Dame, our mother. I love my guys in South Bend. A little money, ten men on the field. As soon know. as they fire Marcus Freeman's unable to count the ten ass, we're going to be in really <laughs> great shape in football. <laughs> But I would just point out, Notre Dame, I, I, 
what will the criteria for Notre Dame making the college football playoff be? I mean, because my guess uh, is if we're 14 or 16, all they got to do is be 14 or 16 in the country. They're in guaranteed. Yeah. What? Two losses? Less than I don't two know. losses? I don't know. Like, honestly. But all they have to do is be ranked in the top 16 or 14. Yeah. And you're still cutting them a check for $2.1 million. It It's wild to me. Yeah. Do they have to win more games? Are they ever going to have a buy? Unless they're like one of the top four seeds, they won't. But But they don't need that. They don't even need that. That's the beauty of the system for these people or schools or whatever. You don't even need to be one of the best in the country. You don't. You just need to get in. That's and it. this has been my point the whole time, right? The The point is, is that, is that these conferences, like the other big point here is that these conferences want to get, exactly, other. exactly. So, so you're going to have a situation where the SEC and we don't know what the auto qualifier situation is going to be or like, you know, obviously in the expanded format we're looking at here, you know, they approved five, seven. So, okay, great. Um, but moving forward after this, I'm telling you the next piece of talk, the next piece of conversation is auto qualifiers and bye weeks I, so we're, you're giving us more revenue, but to ensure we can scoop up even more revenue within that, we want auto qualifiers and we want bye weeks. We want better chances to win national championships. And we want we want that through bye weeks and we want that through more auto qualifiers. That's the next yeah. thing to ask for. And, and I I, think I, that. I think it's a slam dunk no brainer. That's that is going to happen. There there is no doubt about that. That's what I think really damages college football. This this whole revenue thing, at least here you can say, okay, well, you know, the SEC and you know, the Big Ten, they've earned the right to be able to say, hey, we should get paid more money. And I don't really think that that's controversial. I not don't think at all. That, that people, you know, it's not controversial on this show, but people who are making these decisions and having these conversations like commissioners and stuff, they're not they're not going to disagree with that. The numbers lay that out. No. But I think when you start saying to someone, hey, because of what they've done, they start getting bye weeks and they get all these advantages, then you start then you start taking issue because then it's like, well, how much of an advantage are you going to give them? Because they've already got all the best players. They're already playing in the biggest bowl games. They're already playing in the biggest stadiums, the biggest situations. Like, how much of an advantage are we going to give them? But That's I, where I think you have I, issues. And I think you have to ask that question about Notre Dame. How relevant is Notre Dame? I think they're extremely relevant when they're when we're halfway through when the they're season good and, and they're a no loss team when they have zero losses. They're right in the middle of the conversation when they're good. Yeah. But, I, and again, I feel almost weird saying it. I, Notre Dame, there's a lot of years where I just don't believe that Notre Dame is 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 that relevant. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be, but I, I just go back to the, the question of how does Notre Dame lose at home to Ohio State on the goal line because they didn't have the right personnel on um, the field? Um, well, because you hired a rookie head coach who's not qualified for the job. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy Reese goes to Alabama. Didn't see like developing Jalen Milrow. Did, didn't want to stay at Notre Dame. Didn't want to stay at Notre Dame. Like, yeah. did you don't, you just, I, I don't understand it. I want to, I want to believe that my R and we, that we're in this right spot. And I think, don't at, lie to I, me. I think at 10 and three, Notre Dame was a good team last year and their schedule this year. I just ask, is this a college football playoff schedule? You know what I'm going to say. I was looking at this last night. This is not a college football playoff schedule. But again, it's Notre Dame. Doesn't have to be. At Texas A&M, Northern Illinois, at Purdue, Miami of Ohio, Louisville, Stanford, Georgia Tech, Navy, Florida State, Virginia, Army, at USC. Yeah, I mean, I think Florida State. Four State, USC. There's some big games on there, but that's not like a an amazing schedule. That's a pretty weak schedule, actually. I just don't. But again, if you're a no loss team heading into the last three weeks of the season, you're and you probably be should be. Yeah, you probably should be. You're you probably be should be. You're if, gonna be if, right in the middle of it. And you know, if you're playing Virginia Army and at USC, I would think USC is going to be a very difficult game at the Coliseum. Oh. But that game's November thirtieth. At the Coliseum, it's a huge game. You would think that that USC would be top five in the Big Ten. 
arguably top three in the Big Ten. With It depends how much Jerome Moore and Michigan look like. But come on, man. Uh, like Notre Dame, I think Notre Dame, and, and I guess what I want, what I want, I want Notre Dame to be held to an incredibly high standard. You, and I'm all in favor of Notre Dame being being independent. That comes with a price tag. You need to be undefeated. Wow. If you're not going to go through the grind of a conference schedule, you need to be undefeated. It, this was the BYU conversation we had for so many years. I think what's difficult, though, is let's not – the grind of a conference schedule. The ACC is not a grind, right? Like, it, it, like if, if Florida State runs a table in the ACC and loses to Notre Dame, they should be embarrassed. Honestly, on it, like, don't tell me the ACC is some amazing conference on the football field because it's not. And for Notre Dame, yeah, that schedule is soft. There's no doubt about that. But how many times in the football season we're like, yeah, man, <laughs> that schedule is pretty soft for Georgia for, oh, I don't know, Ohio State. Right. Like we talk about this all the time. So so the problem is, is that Notre Dame's going to get in on brand recognition alone, yeah. assuming they're a one loss team. Yeah, I just don't, I, I don't know. Anyway, and I'm a Notre Dame, I'm a diehard Notre I'm miserable on Saturday evenings most weeks because, well, Marcus Freeman sucks. Yeah, are you going to hang your flag but, outside the front door this year or are you too ashamed after that, you know, 10-man ten, ten thing? I'll, I always hang the flag. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we'll see. I just think you look at what is, I think you look at, listen, if Notre Dame's getting $2 million a year from the college football playoff, I'm thrilled. Mm-hmm. I'm thrilled. And with their TV contract and I just, I want Notre Dame to be held to a standard. And for everything that Brian Kelly didn't do, Brian Kelly had an impossibly high standard for himself Yeah, at Notre Dame. And did he come through? He didn't. Did you want him to coach big games? You don't. LSU's finding that out. Yeah. First team all lose big right? games. But I just, Marcus Freeman ain't it. And I think Notre Dame brings boys to the TV. There's no doubt about that. There is no, the only reason I'm a college football fanatic is because of Notre Dame. That's it. Tony Rice, Rick Meyer. Like I, 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 I am here for Brady Quinn. I am a huge Notre Dame fan. Yeah. Manti Teo's fake girlfriend. Uh, she was odd. Uh, but <laughs> listen, one of the great joys of my life was talking to, to Tim Brown at the Super Bowl about Notre Dame football. Yeah. Right. Like I just, I want them to be held to a higher standard. That, that is, that is the only thing that matters. Yep. So, all right, let's get your comments in here. As always, brought to you by our good friends at Prize Picks. One again last night. See, didn't, <coughs> did I bring it up to you today? <coughs> did I? I did not bring it up to you no. today. No. Because again, I go and I say to myself, "You are an incredible pimp of the highest order." I mean, right? you're no Notre Dame, but of yeah. the of the highest of the highest order, you are an incredible pimp. Which That's is right, why dude. I say to myself. That when I look at the New York Chankies, baby, scoring a run in the first inning, winner yesterday, and I, I only say that because it was some kid named Jose Rojas. Oh! Never fucking heard of number 83 yeah. that plays third base for the New York Chankies. Yeah. My man got an RBI single to get me the win in prize picks. Right. And okay. It, uh, it's only, it's only, that's early in the day. But then I look at my guy key last night, my guy key first team, all get the hell out of Jason Tatum's way. Keontae George last night. All I needed was four, three pointers. My man went five of 10. <laughs> oh yeah. I can 50, 50 piece nugget, you know, 50%. Now I will also say, that Jason Tatum, 38 points, six rebounds, two assists, mm -hmm. right? That's 46. Mm -hmm. 44 and a half was his total last night. Okay. That's right, baby. Nice. But that 56 bucks in the account, it, nice. do you know how long it has been since Chaboy went three for three on prize picks? Well, it ain't going to happen tomorrow with the players starting. I could tell you that. I love Prize Picks. <laughs> it is so much fun. Yeah. It is. It, if you have not downloaded the Prize Picks app, if you have not used the promo code Monty to get 100% deposit matching, you're crazy. You are absolutely crazy. If you are not playing my guy, Greg Hawkins, 
playing spring training baseball on prize picks? Yes. Yes. Joseph Harper, who for the longest time could not miss on prize picks. Right. Said to me the other day, man, it's been a dry stretch. I don't know. It's what happens. It's how it goes. But boy, when you're winning on prize picks, it's awesome. I, I put up 20 bucks to win 56.25 last night. Do cashed. It. And the best part is play flex play. Flex play. Yesterday, Jason Tatum was the was one of the Taco Tuesdays. Yeah. F- Got to play on the flex. Right? I'm telling you. Hook it up. Pricepicks.com. 100% deposit matching up to $100. You put in 10, they'll give you 10 more. You can play for a year on 20 bucks. Trust me when I say that. All right, let's get your comments going can we, here. Can we please not light the comments section on fire today? I mean, would you guys mind just keeping it civil? Yeah, if we could keep some normalcy up in this mug. Yeah. Because we're going to light it on fire in 20 minutes when we talk about Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan cheating scandal. Yeah, and all the new details that came out that basically said everything we told you like two months ago. You know. Just saying. That's that's saying. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Eric and Raleigh. Aaron Rodgers is VP for Kennedy. Pat McAfee is the press secretary for them, right? Yeah, I've been immunized. Talk about that coming up. Mike Smith, the Ohio State, is stacking it up. If they don't win it all, Ryan Day is going to have a bad day. Yeah. You mean Lloyd Carr? Right. Ryan Day's he's um, Lloyd Carr. He's, he's, have they ever been seen together in the same room at oh. the same time? <coughs> no, they haven't. <coughs> Tell me that Ryan Day is not Lloyd Carr. And yeah, he better win. It would be nice to have a third party that is not made up of far right and, or okay, left see, loons. Again, we're we're getting into politics, man. That's right, Big Daddy Magic. Hey, well, player. Hey, players. Without blood, you can't live. Go donate, Big Daddy Magic. Redcrossblood.org. Next Monday, one to seven, the Advocates and Murray. They're going to have the blood donation bus that Jake fell out of when he passed out last time he donated blood. <laughs> Me. What was amazing? What? Uh, free snacks. They're giving away gift cards and you're giving the gift of life. Redcrossblood.org. Use the sponsor code Advocates SLC. Advocates SLC. Next Monday, 1 to 7 in Murray. Jake is going to try not to fall out of the bus. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, you should probably take the under on prize picks for me not falling out of the bus, but. You know, I'm just no saying promises. I'm just saying uh, your blood type is THC positive. Yeah, correct. See, there you go. Uh, Dakota Tubbs. Yes, it is, Mike. That's right. Um, let's see who's in this morning. Amy S. Amy. Hello. Good to see you here. Here for the beginning of the show. A hideous, hideously early flight to Pac-12 tourney has one upside. Yeah. Early, are you more of an early or a midday flyer? Uh, depends on the instance. If I'm going home, I like to do morning, early day. Next but... Monday, when we're coming back from spring training. Yeah, it's going to be a long We're day. flying at 530 in the morning. Yeah. Good luck. That's going to be a tough day. By the way, did I mention we're not doing a show next Monday? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, Wasikowski, this is why the ACC will no longer exist next year after ESPN revisits the contract. Once the, do you like? I mean, how wh- strong are the drugs, dude? Honestly, some days I think you just show up and choose violence. Yeah. I I think that's what this is. Uh, Eric Wasikowski, just add an extra weekend to the NCAA tournament and expand to two hundred fifty six teams. It's coming because, then it's why I've been hearing about it and I've been telling you about it for months. I have to believe that Brett Yormark is going to be a leading voice in the fight to expand the NCAA tournament. Yeah. How how could he not? And I don't know when you start beating that drum, but he's at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City now. Yeah, I, I think you have to be already. I, I I think you're having the conversation. Yeah, Scott of Greywater watch. The Big East is pretty good at basketball too, but how relevant are you? How relevant are you? And if you're the Big East, aren't you crying for more NCAA tournament slots as well? <laughs> yes. You yes. are. You are. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Mike Smith, if they split football and basketball, the Big 12 should get some Big East teams. And I think this is, this is again, why basketball expansion has been very quiet. 
It's in everybody again, because I, I keep receipts, mother. <laughs> everybody that was bitching and moaning that you, you, you're wrong, Monty. UConn's coming to the Big 12. I'm t- there was no <laughs> there was no trigger to make that move. With this unequal revenue sharing in the college football playoff, I have heard for the last week this is going to push a, ma- a major overhaul in college basketball. And I think the thing that Tony Petiti and Greg Sankey are going to have trouble getting away from is their own words. Yeah. Well, we put 40, you know, 40% of the teams in the college football playoff. Well, how many did you put in the NCAA tournament? And how many did you? Yeah. Who's driving the TV numbers in college basketball? Who's driving the tournament revenue? Who's driving the tournament shares? Yeah, can't have it both ways, right? I mean, you know, can't have it both ways. Yeah, you're going to apply that logic in football. You got to apply it in basketball. And and that, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. Eric and Raleigh, 16 teams in the college football playoff, 12 of which will come from the SEC and the Big 32. You're not wrong. Uh, the NCAA should adopt a high school basketball playoff rule. Finish 500 overall or finish 500 in league and you qualify for the playoffs. It's a lot of teams. That is yeah. a lot of teams. It, well, it, Michigan wouldn't qualify. No, nah, they wouldn't even be close. I mean, you know, they're 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 playing like 180 basketball right Does now. Does Juwan Howard make it to the locker room before being fired? After no. the Big Ten tournament, no. I love all the uh, I love all the Michigan bloggers hitting me on Twitter. The mooks with the mooks. Thank you. I love all the mooks from Michigan who hit me on Twitter and they're like, "Oh, hey, here's my latest article on you know the Michigan basketball team's going to make a run through the the Big Ten tournament." <laughs> then what are you going to say, Monty? <laughs> I'm going to tell you that they're not making a oh run. Oh my God! Hey, Monty, Monty, Monty. You said that Michigan was terrible. And Michigan, now they're making a run. They're eight and twenty-three. <laughs> Wait, I thought you said they were eight and twenty-three, dude. Come on. The problem is, look at the bottom half of the Big Ten in basketball. Well, look no further. Michigan's, you know, first on the list there. It, it, you're eighteen and thirteen at Iowa, Michigan State, and Minnesota. Michigan State having a down year. Your basketball thoroughbred, Michigan State, 10 and 10 in conference, 18 and 13. Yeah. Is that a tournament team? I mean, you're probably getting the benefit of the doubt, but you can't lose to Wisconsin. You can't lose to Arizona. You can't lose to do players program. You can't lose to Northwestern in Illinois and Wisconsin again and Minnesota and Iowa, Ohio State and Purdue. Uh, and Indiana, and your lone win in those four games is Northwestern. Because it's garbage. Northwestern, who gave you free car wash pet. Never mind. Yeah, shower hurdles. You know, you can't do that. Uh, Wasik- Wasikowski, if you ain't, if you ain't in, you ain't in. Big Twelve ACC need to do a deal. Need to deal yeah, bro, with you're, it. You're, you're, you're. I don't know what you're on. Yeah, today, but good you, luck. You uh, Eric and Raleigh, Florida State, Clemson, Notre Dame won't be left twisting in the wind. The ACC is dead. I would agree with that. They will not be left twisting in the wind. They just won't. To panic. I'm a Yankee fan because of one of my relatives playing for them back in the '40s. Love it. Go Cubs. Cody Hansen. Hello. Is Utah football in danger in the future of college football? Not even a little bit. No. Not even a little bit. I mean, they, they – I'm just telling you that – and I we get asked this a lot on the show. Utah I, – I don't know how else to say it other than they are one of the most successful athletic programs. They have one of the most successful women's developmental programs. You look at the success that, you know, Utah softball has had recent times. Utah women's um, basketball, again, you look at gymnastics, you you look at like their athletic program under Mark Harlan, who I think should have been the commissioner of the Mm Pac-12, who I think should be sitting on the college football playoff committee. He should be an upper level administrator. He's dominating. He is growing and developing athletics. Nobody wants to talk about that because it's Utah. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that um, you have a president and an athletic director in lockstep that are well-respected across all of college athletics. 
I, Utah is in a really good position. And then if they go out and win the Big 12 this year in football, which I think they're going to be in position to do come early November, yeah, they will have games of consequence to determine their fate as a participant in the Big 12 championship. It, it, it's, it's, it's unequivocal to me. And it is, it's crystal clear to me. That's the best football program in the Big 12. And I know that pisses people off. And they're like, well, Monty, what about uh, Utah's the best football program in the Big 12? I totally agree. Kyle Whittingham is, in my opinion, the best football coach in the Big 12. Yep. Do you have a lot of schools that should be better? Yeah. Joey McGuire needs to, to get his shit together this year. Texas Tech has to have a better year. Where's Aaron Wilson this morning? My guy. Thanks. Texas Tech has to have a better year. Yes, they do. TCU, Sonny Dykes. Were you a, were you a one-hit wonder? You got to have a better year. Kleiman's got to have a better year. Leipold has to have a better year. Campbell has to have an even better year. Yeah. Right? You, like, it's you, everybody stepped up. And so the Houstons of the world, look at look at the bounce house. Look at our boys at, at UCF. Uh-huh. There's not going to be, they're not going to be a walkover opponent not one time this year. Look at BYU. I think B, I think BYU gets bowl eligible this coming season. They're going to win some games. Our guy Jake Retzloff, I think, is going to be your starting quarterback. And I think they're going to win games. Yeah, and I think he's going to be a lot better than most people are giving him credit for. And I think when you look at BYU and you compare him to a lot of other programs in the Big 12, BYU's definitely got offseason momentum happening. You know, and I think Utah's got offseason momentum happening. Uh, I think the K states of the world do not have momentum happening. A lot of change um, in, in Manhattan. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that I haven't heard a ton out of uh, Oki Light. Um, so I don't you know. Got knocked out of the Big 12 tournament. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It just kind of, I, I don't know. I, I think that, yeah, there's there's definitely, there's definitely. But Monty, some Oak teams. State's got Alan Bowman back. Okay. Okay. My question is at what point does somebody like who's at the bottom of the Big 12? Baylor. Well, Dave. At what point do you say we want to win football games? Because I can tell you right now, Utah wants to win every single game, and they do everything they need to do to win every single football game. Well, and I think they expect to win. And That's they, the difference. Because they're well-prepared, they're well-coached, they're well-trained, um, they are well-fed, they have an actual strength and conditioning program and a regiment. Like, I don't think, you know what, man? I don't think on any any way, shape, or form would I be worried about the future of Utah football. Yeah. They, they're going to be just fine. 